what's poppin youtube it's your girl kk and i'm back with another video and seeing from the title you already know this is about to be a lace closure so in a four by four that's gonna be melted down as fuck okay i'm just joking but yeah it's gonna be a four by four closure so just sit back and watch me do this um of course obviously i'm gonna start with her braid pattern and just etch it out now i do the same braid pattern for everything that i do literally it's either straight back or it's a part down the middle with the braids coming around the side, straight back. It's the easiest and flattest for me. I'm gonna get that all sectioned out. Now her hair was a little thick, a little coarse. A little like I just washed it and go. I'm gonna just wash and go, but it really didn't give what it's supposed to give. So I'm gonna take some of my Elastic QP and I'm gonna run that through there. Because no matter what, you want to make sure that your client hair is moisturized up under that install. Like, I'm not one of them stingy stylists that's just going to be like, oh, your braids going to be crunchy and your hair going to itch, your scalp going to itch because your braids is crunchy and your scalp is dry. Like, I'm not going to do you like that. I'm going to definitely take care of your hair because I am a hairstylist first. I'm a beautician. I'm a natural hair care fanatic. Okay. And after putting that elastic QP, it's just, it felt like butter. My fingers was even a little slippery because that elastic QP gets the job done. But yeah, y'all just sit back and watch how I just uh, do this braid pattern. Excuse my dog if y'all can hear him barking. He just won't let me be great at all. First, I'm always take that first braid and braid it down the base just so that I do have a flat foundation to put that first track right there. And also, I don't like when the braids be pulling up. Like when they braid them straight back and then they just pull it up and at the next one, I don't, I don't like that. So I always have an anchor braid at the bottom and I crochet the ends of my braids underneath that anchor braid. This first one right here, I'm going to connect it to that to the end of that anchor braid and then from there i'm gonna crochet the other ones underneath and keep adding them in like that because it creates less tension on the hair the hair not pulling up and you'll have them little bumps right there you see that elastic up baby it works so fast that's like my favorite stuff in the world i learned about that from some salon i was working at she was using all their products i was like hold up slick what is this and it's slick, slick, baby. Hey there. Your braids do not have to be tight. I'm not putting a lot of tension on her head. They're secure, not tight at all. Go ahead and connect that one. The braid's so nice and so sleek. And I like nice and neat braids. I do not like them big old bulky braids. No, because I want this install to last. So the braid pattern, the base is very important. The bigger your braids, the bigger the weave going to sit on top of your hair. So it's very important that your hair be braided flat see how i don't even need a lot of that just a little bit go a long way y'all don't laugh at my extended pinky i don't know why i just braid like that you just be stuck like that And braids are not tight but secure if you have a problem with braiding as well my only suggestion my advice would be to 
when you're picking up hair, pick up smaller pieces of hair so that your braids don't look like they're dragging. You know what I mean? If you pick up smaller pieces of hair as you go, you have a tighter pattern. And I'm going to just crochet that braid under my base braid. So that when I do pull it up and bring it to the next one, I don't have all that tension between the nape of her neck and where the braids are connected at. There's no pulling right there. So when I'm stitching braids right there, I'm not really, when I'm stitching the hair, I'm not really stitching on her natural hair, putting too much tension right there. You know, if that makes sense, because there's a braid right there and they're all coming up from that braid. I, I don't know. It, it's hard to explain. But if y'all know the other way that people have done it, then you'd understand this way. And I'm tender headed, so I like to try to minimize the pain that I'm giving to my clients. I ain't trying to have hair coming out. I want this to be stress free. Like you can't even feel them braids. Y'all been requesting long long video, so this is a long video. Just for those who wanted it. I'm going to keep that middle part because her lace is going to light in the middle. She's going to have a middle part. And I'm going to keep that middle part as I go. Just so when I part that lace down the middle, it's very, very flat. And my braids are small, so it's going to be flat regardless. Like... It's not going to be lumpy and bumpy. And I try not to add fake hair into my client's hair. If it's a necessity, if they need it, then I probably just.
that's the completed braid pattern and now that that's done i'm gonna take my stocking caps and of course do the stocking cap method because we are using glue I'm going to take my boho liquid gold and I'm going to gel her edges back. Thank you. I feel like this stuff is like my holy grail. It's literally liquid gold. It says it in the name. Blow dry it on cool or the heat setting. I like to use cool because I don't want to be burning nobody. So, yeah. More liquid gold to melt her cap. And I don't do the Ninja Turtle method because that really irks my nerves when they be pulling that stocking cap all the way down at them clients' face. I really, that irritates my soul. When that's semi-dry, I'm going to sew around what I need. And I pretty much just eyeball this. I don't even measure it. As long as that front is wide enough, the back really don't matter. The stocking cap is good, though, because it it's like a barrier between your scalp and the lace because that lace itches. You ain't never had no lace before, baby. It's the worst itch you've ever felt in your life. You, you will scratch that lace so much trying to get to your scalp that you'll rub a hole in the lace. So this is like a protective barrier between your scalp and the lace. So the lace ain't rubbing up against your scalp. I know it may look like I'm tucking her head a lot, but I'm really not. The video just sped it. I ain't really pushing her head that much. But if your stylist do be pushing your head, don't be mad. We just be in the zone, and I just need your head to be where I need it to be when I need it to be there. And of course, y'all can't read my mind, but I wish. But hey, it is what it is. Line that up, make sure that that's straight and even, it covers enough. Of course, I'm a cleaner forehead with alcohol so that that glue adheres to her skin, free of any makeup, dirt, debris, anything like that. Then I'm going to use my Boho Skin Protect. Always, always, always use your skin protectant. Always. It's also an antiperspirant, so it, it prevents sweating in that area. I'm going to take a net on my clients every, 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 every time. There will probably never be a time that I don't use a net on a client. Even if she don't like nets, I'm going to convince her to use a net. Some people don't like nets because other stylists have done them wrong and dirty. So I'm going to educate you on why you need a net. And I'm going to have you feeling comfortable and secure in the fact that I know how to use this net. Okay. The net is so that I can sew on areas where there is no hair at because as you see, I just braided my braid straight down so she does have gaps. And I like my, my stitching to be pretty close together when I'm installing your hair. So on those gaps, I like to be able to sew right there so I'll just sew on top of the net. It also 
it also prevents tension because I am sewing on top of the net and not on your braid. So I'm not pulling your braid super tight. And when your wig, when your weave starts to grow out, it's going to grow out all in one piece. So you won't be able to stick your fingers through there and touch your scalp and have loose tracks because I'm sewing on a net. So it's like a helmet, basically. And those corners at the top of the net, I'm going to always fold them down so that it's flat right there. Y'all forget my elbow. I, I scraped my, my elbow. I fell going up the stairs like a klutz. <laughs> I'll be going through it. Real nice, easy and flat. And I'm not tugging hard. I'm just securing. There's a difference between pulling somebody's scalp out and securing securing the net down i just want everything to be flat I ain't even got to use a lot of this net. You should be able to use a big net like this at least three or four times. At least three times. I even be saving the scraps sometimes. If I just got to put a little extra piece somewhere. Or if I got to make a net, a whole net out of some pieces, baby. This net go a long way if you know what you're doing with it. And I'm only sewing the outer perimeter. I do like this net because it is harder, so it's going to hold on to the tracks a little bit better than the stretchy ones. I feel like the stretchy ones are not doing anything for me. Not the way I sew. The stretchy ones are softer, though, so it might be better for your client's uh, head but I did oil her scalp previous to this and this ain't the type of lace on the net that's going to really make her head itch anyway Simple, still nice and flat. I'm going to take my Ruby Kisses foundation and I'm going to match it to her, this closest shade. I'm just right there doing a test to see which one blends. They pretty much both blend, but I'm going to choose the best one. I think the darker one. Yeah. I like to go darker on transparent laces because the lace is already like white has a white cast so i have to use a darker shade to cover that and make sure it blends um because that white cast is kind of going to take away some of the color if i was to go too light her scalp would look really really light because that white is already light clean her forehead off one more time and i'm using the bold holds um, lemon myrtle glue the acrylic base glue probably only three or four layers um, she 
she was doing this for her labor and delivery. So I was really trying to make sure that her lace stayed down. <laughs> it was not lifting because if you ain't never had a baby or if you had a baby, then you know, boy, you be up in there sweating and some more stuff. And I just did not want her lace to come up. I encouraged her to wear her headband while in labor and take it off during the pictures. But baby, keep that thing and melt it down. I'm always flat iron the end of my track because it be rolled up so tight. It's curved and if I flat iron it, it'll just lay flatter. Always double the first track. So it gives it a bit of thickness. That first layer of glue is really to melt the cap into her scope. And I want y'all to see how fast that thing dry and how we can dry completely even. All the layers have to dry completely clear before you put the next one or before you lay that lace. Especially if you're not seasoned. If you're not seasoned, if you're not a well-known vet in this game, please do not lay that lace or another layer of glue while that glue is still white. Because it's going to be clumpy and lumpy and sticky and you're not going to understand why you're going to be cussing out the glue manufacturer have them go online upset trying to post how it's really supposed to be done then you're going to be looking molded because all you had to do the first time was just let it dry clear completely it's a process When I flip that double track, I drop one. I drop the first track and keep going with the one that's underneath and flip the second one underneath. So that one flat, then pick up the next one, flip that one along with the one on top of it now and keep sewing. Now I've grabbed both of them, you see. Flip the second one. Secure that down. And keep going. She did have pack hair, so it was a little thick at the top and thinner at the bottom, but it's okay because it's going to work out for her. See, now that glue is dry. I'm going to add another layer. Popsicle sticks are great because they're flat, and I can just lay it on there so flat. You want to have a wide enough space of glue as well because you want it to stick to her forehead as well as that cap. And you want that lace to be totally melted down. And watch that turn clear. Even though I had, even though it, it may not look even, it's still going to dry clear. You have to let every layer dry. And it dry pretty quick.
same thing on the other side when I flip that drop one flip one continue flip the second one and continue want to always make sure your stitches are flat as you go the wefts are flat and I sew through the weft not underneath through to guarantee that they're flat and guarantee that this weave is not going to move or get loose See how that layer is completely dry? You can't see nothing. You're going to go ahead with the third one. This one a little bit thinner because I did use a lot the second time. See how I can sew? when there's not a braid right there because I have that net right there. I dropped one, I'ma flip it. Right behind her ear, right where her ear stops. That's where I'ma go up to with that first bundle all the time. Okay, so this is my last layer. And they all dry completely clear. Like, that is very, very crucial is to let them dry completely clear. And it's okay if you didn't know that. It's a learning process. Like, when I first started lace, I didn't really know anything about it. I was just jumping out on faith. You feel me? I was just trying things out. But as I got more seasoned and I realized, okay, well, taking classes and looking at the manufacturers. Because Bold Hold, the hair diagram that created boat hold miss tamika she gets on live and she teaches people how to do it so you better believe i was tuned into them videos okay and look at how fast that lace dried that 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 glue has dried already but you see me in the back i'm just putting makeup on her closure just so that it blends um spraying the makeup with some gots to be so that makeup stays in there blow drying a little bit to get that in there this lace she had was very thin. The, the the hair was very thin. But I'm going to show you how that could be a really, really good thing. So that you do not have to pluck so, so much. And I know that it's cropped out. I know it's cut off right here. I know. I'm sorry. But literally all I did was place the lace in that glue. That's all I did. I just put it on top of there. That's it. That's all I did. Literally, was just put that lace right there, have her hold it, and then I'm going to blow dry it. Wherever I want that hairline to start, wherever that lace is at, I'm going to put the very, very front of her hairline into that lace. Right there. Sometimes I even put a little bit of lace inside of the glue so that it's super duper melted. And then I'm going to just tie that up. And the elastic band ain't got to be tight. Mine are literally Velcroed, so I just snap that thing up right there. I'm sorry. I'm going to do better for y'all, I promise, because that was probably real crucial to some people.
But right here, now I'm going to start to sew. I always lay my lace in the glue before I sew it down so I know where I want it to be. And as I start to sew, I'm going to sew in an X pattern on each braid. So I'm going to come in from the right on this side. Secure that knot. And then come in from the left on this side and make an X on that braid. From the right and then from the left. That knot is a little bit further down because I'm trying to stretch that lace to get make it flat. Along with doing this, you always want to make sure that it's flat. I'm going to knot that, a slip knot in that, tighten it, and cut. I always do one side at a time. Cause you don't want to go all the way around and then realize that you didn't stretch it enough. Start at an X, come in from the left on this side and then come at, come in on the right on the other side. Okay, I did this one three times just to secure it. But that's okay. You do as many makes you feel comfortable. It's not rocket science. I mean, it is, but having the right tips and trips, tips and tricks will help you. I always come in from the F, do an X because you see how that's kind of like a little lumpy, not secure. I always stretch it and then come in at an X. So I'm stretching it. I'm going to do another one right there because it just wasn't secure enough for me. I always do what makes you feel comfortable. This technique might not work for everybody. This te technique may be the holy grail for some people. I know some people, they might not do theirs like that. And their techniques don't work for me. But I know this works for me after trial and error. I know some people like to sew theirs down before they uh they they uh glue it. I like to glue before I sew. And then from here going around the back, I'm just probably gonna do these just straight across. Because when the sides are sewn down already, all you gotta do to the back is just make sure that's stretched as far as possible. And that that lace in the front is already glued down. That elastic band is holding that in place. So I know my resistance. I know how much I can pull back, you know. But I ain't even trying to pull back that much. I'm just trying to get it flat. And with having that net right there, I can sew anywhere. Now I'm going to start singling my tracks and I always flat iron it so that one lay flat and I'm going to bring this one all the way up from the closure. 
because I want that to fall in her face. Connect it right where that closure stops at. I just could not be great right here. I don't even know what the problem was. Uh, I probably was trying to secure that first little knot like three times and was tripping. Doing too much. But that's okay because you can always learn from your mistakes. You can always get it back right. But I'm going to bring this one forward in front of her ear so that this hair falls in her face when I curl it back. Or even if she was wearing it straight. Connect that one to the last one and then flip, go above it. Yes, I was watching Supernatural in the back because Sam and Dean is my boys. It's my dog. Even though that dude right there, he fine. He killed my boy Sam. I ain't really messing with him like that. But okay, anyway, back to the weave. I'm going to just continue to go so around uh, back and forth from ear to ear like I was in the back. Securing everyone, showing y'all that now I can sew on places that don't have any hair because I have that net and it's going to be super secure. So a net is very fundamental. Don't tell your stylist you don't want no net. If you don't know how to take that net off, just say that. Ask your stylist, can I come back and you can take this out for me? Take it out and then go home, wash your hair, uh, get some braids, uh, take a rest week, whatever you do. Get your scalp back right and then you come back and get your install again. Cause we, don't wanna, we don't want nobody cutting their hair trying to take this net off. Rushing. You trying to have your boyfriend in the back cutting and he can't see what's your hair, what's the thread, and what's the net. We ain't got time for that. We tell you to come back, boo. I can take it out for you. I would gladly. But yeah, I'm going to just come back ear to ear. Going around and around. That elastic band is not in my way at all. I ain't worried about it. It ain't worried about me. Me go. I got a cold. It's allergy season. <coughs> After I flip that, I'm going to just keep going down, keep sewing. Always knotting every stitch. Always wrapping that thread around that needle two, three times. Always, always, always. And it's funny because if you noticed when I go this direction, I'm coming towards 
the left, I, I wrap the thread around the needle. When I'm going the other direction, I put the, I wrap the needle one time and then I twist the end of the needle in my finger and bring the needle back through that, that loop. I don't know. It's just a different technique. It's what's comfortable for me. Like I say, do what's comfortable for you. Don't try to be like nobody else. You got to have your own technique. You got to do what make you different. You try to follow somebody else, you're not going to get it because that's not the way. Your brain don't move like theirs. You don't think like theirs. You don't process stuff how they do. Like, you can't be like somebody else. You got to find what's comfortable for you. Bring that thing all the way up to the closure, dig in the closure a little bit so I can flip flip that track, dig in the closure, and then I'm going to sew on the top part of the track that was flipped. And take it again, knot it through so that it's secure. Now it's flat, it's in place, it ain't moving. But see how I do that? I'll take it, put it through, twist it, and put it through again. <coughs> So it's still a knot rather than twisting it around. Pull it out, twist the end of it, end of the thread, and then put it through. Always make sure that thread is tight and secure because that's what will make your install loose as well. See, when I try to do it the other way, coming from this way, I'd be so confused. It ain't as swift. Like, I'm, like, left-handed or something. Like, I can't do it. But when I'm about to flip, I always want to knot that like three, four times. Pull that thread. Slip knot that. Take your time. I know the video sped up, but I definitely take my time.
It literally don't take long to do a weave. It probably took me like two hours to do this, maybe two and a half, including styling and stuff. The the key thing about an install is that you just want it to be flat. You don't want to have to take pieces and put pieces here and do this. Nah, you want like just one swift motion. You feel me? That's why when I have a pattern, I continue with that same pattern. The first bundle, I went back and forth, side to side, side to side, straight across. The second one, I'm going curved. So I'm going up to the ear and come back around, go up to the other ear, ear to ear, curving, curving, curving. The end of this bundle, I'm going to try to secure it down to the, the previous uh, track just so that it's flat and seamless. And it's so flat. The hair is thick, but it's so flat. There is no humps, lumps, bumps, nowhere. And sometimes when you uh, flip those tracks, you might have a bundle that's just kind of flipped up. All you got to do is take your hot comb and uh, press that down. But that's why I like to flat iron my tracks before I lay them. Coming back with this one, starting from the top, because I do like it to be even on each side. So over there on the right side, I had three bundles coming up to her ear. So on this side, I have to have three bundles coming up to her ear. Because I'm like, I'm a symmetrical fanatic. I like to be symmetric. Very meticulous in my work. You have to take pride in your work. Clients like you more when you take pride in it. When they know that you do this because it's your passion and it's something that you really want to perfect. Rather than it's just something that you do as a hobby or you're just winging it, you know, or just getting into it. They want to know that you know what you're doing. So it's always best to take your time and really practice. I remember when I first started doing weaves, I think I was doing them for like $65. Just so that I can have people come sit in my chair so I can see what I need to do. And of course, some of those clients are still um, loyal customers today. But a lot of them, they like, nah, girl, I can't mess with you. Because I was just, I was, I was learning, you know. And you know when you get your install done for $65, that person ain't the best. But it's going to get you to what you need to get done. But now I'm doing weaves for like $200, $250 because I know what I'm doing. Because I can slay some shit because I didn't learn that. I didn't practice. I learned from mistakes. I put my all into my craft. No matter what you do, you got to give it your all. If all you do is ponytails, baby, you better get that ponytail your all. And see, I'm going to cut the tracks now. Because I was going to ear to ear. But with this bundle, I'm just going to go straight across. Because that's enough going up to the ear. If I do, it's going to be too full in her face. In -app and, and right here, I just wanted to go straight across so that I can cover the tracks from going up and down. And, and I thread my needle so long, I probably only have to use about six needles. When you're using three bundles, your tracks don't have to be super close together. They shouldn't be super close because then you'll run out of hair. But let's say I was using like four or five bundles. Then they'd be hella close together. Then I would have doubled more than one track. Then I would have cut more than just this last track. Because mind you, the first two tracks, the first two bundles, I did not cut. I always make sure that it's even. I'm coming up the same amount on one side as I did on the other side.
can see right here, I'm just pressing it to make sure that that track, them tracks is straight, they flat. To kind of help out with the uh, styling process a little bit. Flat on that bundle that I'm about to put in. And then I'm going to lay this last track right across the closure where that white line on the closure is at. I'm going to put that last track there because I don't want that white line seeing, showing, showing through when I style it. Because of the contrast of the color, it definitely will show through. Pick this little ugly head through and we don't want that. We want it to be seamless. So yeah, I'm basically going to sew it on top of that closure. So I'm grabbing part of that closure in the track and sewing those two together. So that this track lays on top of that little white line of demarcation. Still creating a gap because her bundles are thick and you don't want to have too much hair clumped up at the top especially when the hair is thick towards the top of the weft and thinner at the bottom because then it looks weird it looks like a helmet and we don't i'm not going for that look you're going for natural flat not bulky as hell pressing that to get that to lay down flatter And I don't know what's up with my hot comb. It's like it's, well, it's not hot enough. Sometimes it be hot as hell. Sometimes it don't be. Mm. That's what you can get with the Amazon uh, pressing combs. She was dead falling asleep and I'm like, mm -mm, baby, you can't do that. You have to um be up, hold your head up. You can't you can't do that. I'm trying to do something here. I cannot hold your head up for you. I got needles, threads, hot combs in your head, and you trying to be nodding off. Mm-mm. 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 how close that is to her face what if she would have nodded back and burnt the whole side of her face up her eyebrow just sizzled off she want that to be flat and melted you can't even tell where the lace where i'm finna cut you don't even know And I know the picture quality is horrible. I probably need to just put the camera closer and stop zooming in. But it's a learning process. We're going to get it together. But anyways, I'm going to just cut off that white band. That's why I don't glue all the way there so I can still cut that off because that's thick. I don't want that there. You can add a little bit of makeup to kind of blend that out. I'm 
Bio silk, the silk that out. That's like my favorite stuff in the world. And you can see already that that lace is like, it's giving real natural. She wanted the middle part. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up. Comb them hairs over. The bio silk get it nice and shiny, baby. Silked out. I'm not going to tweeze her part. Not all the time do I tweeze the part. It just depends on the look. This lace was already a little thin, and I felt like tweezing that part was just going to make it super noticeable. But from where it was naturally, it was it was given real natural. Real like this grew out of her scalp. Real Scout vibes. I was trying to give her a little baby widow's peak right there. I don't know why I did this here. Normally, I do curl the baby hairs, but I use my little mini flat iron, but I wasn't trying to pull that out. I was being lazy and thought I could do it like that. It was a fail. Don't try that. Don't do that. Now no big ass flat iron. Don't do that. But I'm going to take some more of my liquid gold and I'm going to mold the baby hairs down first with that. And I'm not perfect at baby hairs whatsoever. I just be trying. I just be winging it. Sometimes they be hidden, sometimes they don't. And then I put the mousse because the mousse will soften up that um, liquid gold a little bit. And help me be able to mold them exactly how I want them. Now I'm about to start curling with my flat irons. Cause I love me some flat iron curls, girl. And of course, I'm going to use my Fantasia Spritz to hold that down. These are my titanium flat irons. They go up to 480 degrees. They digital, both Fahrenheit and Celsius. They $100. You can pick them up on my website. At Lashare Boutique. That online period. See, this was completely zoomed out, and this is clear as day. Like, I don't know what it be, but the iPhone 11 really be playing with me. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> it's 
Some days it's hot, some days it's not. But I'm going to just curl these away from her face. So these are going towards the right. This is her left side of her face. So the curls are going to the right. To go away from her face. And I'm not taking pretty small sections. They they kind of chunky. You ain't got to take small sections. It probably took me like 20 minutes to curl her whole head. Max. That curl really confused me. Like, I ain't curl it the right way or something. Now these curls are going to go to the left because I do split the head in half. So the first previous two sections were going to the right. These two sections are going to the left. If you want to curl in tutorial, then let me know. Because I think some people still do have a difficult time trying to get the curls to look the same on each side. How to curl, how to hold it, like what techniques to use. I know it's kind of chopped off on this side. But it's the same technique. The hair, the tail of the hair just go underneath.
now the curls is done. The curls is popping. It looks so natural. Like, it's really coming from her scalp. I love it. But we're going to clean up that hair, that uh middle part, because it's a little too thin for me. And the part is kind of wide. I'm going to take my black hairspray with a thick rat tooth, rat tooth comb, and I'm going to just trace the outline to see how I like it. And then I'm going to go in the with a thinner one to clean it up a little bit. Because I don't ever want to just put too much black spray the first time because it ain't no going back from there. Well, I mean, it is, but it's hard to kind of fix that. And so then that's it. And then baby hairs was not hidden from me. So I said, let me try something. Just make them a little looser, a little fluffier, and push them back a little bit. I like to put bio silk on my baby hairs just to make them shiny. And yeah, that's it. And she was done. And she loved it. That's what it looked like in natural lighting. You cannot see any lace. It's very undetectable. And it's very natural. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Peace.